In today's Division 2 video, we are going to be talking about the current RNG system, how to fix it or how to improve upon the current formula. Though this is not perfect in any way, I can also still assure you that it could be worse. In fact, this is not the worst RNG I've seen in gaming. Now, this also doesn't mean that I'm excluding the bad luck of players who have been grinding for months with the hope of getting a special or a specific exotic. After all, if it was perfect, there wouldn't be a reason to try to improve or fix it. So how can we fix this imperfect RNG? Well, we can fix it with a system often referred to as aspirational RNG design. But before we break that aspirational RNG design into pieces, let's briefly talk about RNG tightening. And please know that a lot of the information that I will be using in this video is coming from RNG patents made by publishers and independent studios. So usually RNG, most especially for exotics or high level items, is made to create a notion of pride and accomplishment, if that rings a bell. It is something that is done to make you work hard for something, then get a relief once you get it. The chance for a special item to drop could be 5%. It could be 6%. Some could be 0.001%. Every developer or any live service game utilizes this method. They all do it in the hope of adding flavor or some kind of a ingredient to their recipe of a game. The problem is that developers also use the same method to drive increase in microtransaction sales and mostly for player retention. If there isn't enough high-end reward in a loot pool, or if there isn't enough aspirational sustainable content, developers of most games will introduce scarcity by tightening the RNG system to add value to their loot. As a lot of us already know, scarcity drives up the value of every single item. The less it drops, the higher the value. And of course, in some cases, it will make players want to go for it more and then want to play the game more with the hopes of getting that item. But if not careful, this decision often backfires on every studio. Devs will intentionally reduce drop rates to increase the grind or keep players playing. And this method only works within the first two weeks of an expansion or release of a coveted item. After several runs and hours of grinding, gamers will leave the game if the item doesn't drop for them. So this aspirational RNG design is not brand new. It is a variant of many scripted RNG designs and patented ideas out there from EA and Ubisoft and other studios. But it will do a couple of things. It will clarify that RNG for exotics need to exist outside of the general loot pool. It will take into account the amount of XP accumulated by a player and the current exotic missing from the player's inventory. This, of course, will be separate from exotics that have a quest step attached to them because those should be guaranteed after completing the steps required. So for starters, Massive's RNG for Division 2 should have an extra layer determining exotic drops outside of the current system. Examine the player's account for the kind of exotics that is missing. Then look at the amount of XP or hours the players have been putting into grinding the specific mission that drops that item. After looking into this, use that system and that information to increase the chance for the player to get a certain exotic that they don't have, assuming that this is not a quest step exotic. This combined with the current targeted loot farm will help with player retention and will also encourage players to keep on farming. Now, this doesn't mean that a new player will not be able to get an exotic the first day or a first time raider would be able to get Eagle Bear. Those things will still be possible. However, the game will also be rewarding for players who have been playing for a long term. Players will be able to have faith in an RNG system and know that their hard work does pay off, though that's not the reality of this real world. But that's why we call this a game, a place where you can make everything happen. And if Massive fears that having this system will cause players to rush through content, then they need to create more aspirational replayable content. PvP is an avenue that a lot of games use and that could be quite useful, but it hasn't been addressed or touched in several updates. In Destiny 2, for example, there is a known thing or a known idea out there that after certain thousands of XP farmed, there is bound to be an exotic drop. And even within the seasonal pass system, 
the exotic you get from it is often an exotic that you haven't had before. So that is one of the cool things that you guys can see when you're examining this feature or the way it is done in other games. Now, this doesn't mean that Destiny 2 is perfect because there are thousands of Destiny 2 players out there that will let you know that they are still unlucky. They still haven't gotten a certain exotic from a few seasons ago. So that is a well-known fact. However, that is something that could be built upon and initiated in Division 2. If it is a raid specific activity, exotic drops should be slightly tuned and increased since it's a high level activity. As far as drop chances per difficulty is concerned, hard difficulty should be at least 3% for some of these activities, challenging should be around 7%, and heroic should be around 15% drop chance, and legendary should be at 20% drop chance. Though these numbers may seem too high or too low, but I can assure you, tightening the RNG only benefits a studio for a few weeks. Most gamers want to be rewarded, and if it means going to a different game to feel that sense of pride and accomplishment, they will do it. Gamers will move to another game. The truth is, we've all been programmed to find happiness in random rewards since we were children, ever since the first time we opened that cereal box to find that lucky item. However, I am one of those that would rather pay for an exotic than grind 300 hours for it and still not get it because RNG has another layer of RNG, which is another layer on top of the current RNG. All I'm saying is, Massive should take into account the amount of hours that players spend on your game when it comes to grinding the same mission on Heroic and still not get an item. You have a lot of questions where people wonder, is it even worth it to even play the game? Is it worth it to play heroics? Is it worth it to play legendary missions if the chances of items dropping are so small it's almost non-existent? Now I know that the developers can make this happen because they have a wonderful system that is able to accurately detect damage glitches and not make mistakes. So if they have a system like that then I'm sure that you know, they are halfway into creating a rewarding loot system. I'm glad that they're improving the stat quality of a lot of the loot, which is something that I'm really excited about, and I hope to see it manifest itself in a perfected form in TU9, but the drop chances are also quite important. Anyways, let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section, as well as drop your own ideas and suggestions. As always, it's DS signing out. I'll see you in the next one.